Hey everyone, welcome back to the 45 Home Lab YouTube channel. I'm Zach, and today we're diving into some big news in the virtualization world. VMware has introduced its free version of ESXi, and we're going to explore what that means for Home Lab enthusiasts like you and I. We'll also compare it to Proxmox VE, a popular open source alternative. So let's get started. So VMware has quietly brought back its free ESXi hypervisor. The new surfaced in the release notes for ESXi version 8.0 update 3E, and you can download it free of charge from the Broadcom support portal. I'll have more to say on that at the end of this video. This move comes after VMware discontinued the free version over a year ago when shifting to a subscription-only model. The reversal seems to be a response to the community feedback and competition from other virtualization platforms. So with ESXi's free version, it was a staple for home labbers. It offered a stable, lightweight hypervisor that runs on very minimal resources and has excellent performance, even on lower end hardware. And it also has a mature ecosystem. Even if you're not using the full vSphere stack, you're still getting access to the same hypervisor core that powers countless enterprise data centers around the world. Personally, I liked its straightforward setup and the ability to get hands-on experience with the tool that is so commonplace in both enterprise and home lab. However, there are some caveats. So the free version of ESXi lacks some features like vCenter integration, which limits centralized management capabilities. Additionally, the abrupt discontinuation in 2024 left many users feeling uncertain about VMware's commitment to the future of its products availability. This uncertainty has led many to explore open source alternatives that offer more transparency and consistent support. In previous versions, after installation, users had to manually apply a free license key obtained from VMware's portal. In ESXi 8.0 U3E, the installer comes with a pre-installed free license, eliminating the need for manual license application. So this streamlines the setup process. Some other things unavailable in the free version are so there's no API access, so third-party tools relying on APIs like Veeam cannot interact with the hypervisor. There's no advanced features, so things like vMotion, high availability, HA, and distributed resource scheduler, DRS, are absent. Now, these won't be big a big deal for a lot of home labbers, but it's important to mention for those who do, and to mention that Proxmox has feature equivalent options built in stock, not behind any sort of paywall. An alternative that a lot of people have swapped to is one that I have a lot of familiarity with, and that is Proxmox. So Proxmox is a powerful open source virtualization platform that combines KVM for virtual machines and LXC for containers. It offers a web-based interface, clustering, and integrated backup solutions. One of the standout aspects is that the free version includes the full feature set. The only difference between the free and paid versions are access to the enterprise repository, which offers more thoroughly tested packages and professional support services. In my home lab, Proxmox has been a game changer. The flexibility to run both VMs and containers, and the active community support, and the transparency of an open source project aligns well with my needs. So, while VMware's ESXi is a solid product, the open nature and comprehensive features of Proxmox VE make it my go-to choice for home lab virtualization. The second last thing I'll cover is just a roundup of some of the features and how they compare to Proxmox in a more concise manner. So, they're both type 1 hypervisors. A limitation with ESXi is you're limited to 8 vCPUs per VM, while Proxmox is only limited by the hardware. Both have an excellent web UI. There's no central cluster management with ESXi, but Proxmox has this available from the get-go. There's no native backup integration, while Proxmox has vzdump and Proxmox backup server. And there are many more, but I wanted to highlight these particularly. One last thing I'll mention here are the steps to actually download the ISO. So the Proxmox download process is notably more straightforward, requiring no account creation or additional verification steps. So full disclosure, uh, a lot of people know this about me here, but I'm a very impatient person. And this one thing bugged me enough that I wanted to include it in the video. When doing research, I honestly needed to get the ISO for ESXi. So I want to provide a rundown on how to do that versus Proxmox. So for ESXi, you're gonna search for Broadcom in a web browser. You're gonna click sign in. You're gonna sign up for or log into your Broadcom account. You're gonna to go to my downloads, then click free software downloads available here. Scroll down, click VMware vSphere Hypervisor. Click VMware vSphere Hypervisor again. 
click 8.0 U3E, click I agree to the terms and conditions, then you can finally click download. Psych! There's more. You now need to provide additional verification. Click yes. First, enter your last name, your first name, email, company, full address, then click agree, then click submit. You'll be brought back to the download page where you can finally download it. Done. Now you have your ISO downloading for ESXi. For Proxmox, on the other hand, one, search for Proxmox in your web browser. Two, click download link. Three, download it. Done. And you don't have to sign up for an account. But with all that said, I'm curious to hear from you. Are you planning to use the reintroduced free version of ESXi? Have you already made the switch to Proxmox or another hypervisor like XCPNG? Share your experiences and setups in the comments below. So let's learn from each other and continue building amazing home labs. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more home lab content. If you want to see what we have to offer, go to 45homelab.com. Until next time, happy virtualizing.